Hi, Dravet syndrome is a complex uh, epilepsy that has genetic causes and there are multiple breakthroughs in the understanding of this condition and a new advancement and breakthroughs in the treatment as well. So let's discuss Dravet syndrome in details today. It's very, very important to identify Dravet syndrome correctly and make the diagnosis because there are some medications that are commonly used for epilepsy. They can actually worsen the diagnosis and worsen the seizures in Dravet syndrome if was not picked up early in life. This video will be uh, comprehensive and uh, long because I wanted to make sure that I will deliver all the information you need to best understand this condition so that you can help your child and take good care of them without any complex doctor's words. <laughs> Welcome to the Epilepsy Encyclopedia. I'm uh, your epilepsy specialized neurologist or epileptologist, Dr. Omar Danun. Dravet syndrome was first described by Dr. Charlotte Dravet in 1978. And in 2001, there was a description on the discovery of the genetic basis of Dravet syndrome, the sodium channel uh, mutations and SCN1A. And after that, there was a huge breakthrough in the advancement of the treatment and understanding of this particular condition. What are the features of Dravet syndrome and how we can make the diagnosis? Most of the children will have early life uh, seizures that can happen in the first year of life up to uh, the first 18 months. Most of the time between three and nine months, the seizures will start. And the way seizures present will vary so much between children among uh, different age groups and it depends of the mutation variant and what happens in the gene. The first year of life, the development will be normal. The child will be developing very well, normally like any other child, and uh, they will start having uh, febrile seizures that are often long and prolonged febrile seizures that can happen with fever, with illness, with vaccination and immunization, or any uh, even uh, hot bath or anything that raises the body temperature. And then those uh, can be longer and longer over time. They will be spaced out, and then with time, the seizures can happen spontaneously and uh, get worse and worse with time and get longer and longer to like multiple minutes to even an hour or even longer. The seizures will be uh, characteristics by a clonic seizures. Clonic means like jerking in one arm. Look at this baby has a hemiclonic seizures, like half of the body is like on their left side. Uh, they're having the myoclonic jerks and it seems that the child just got a bath and maybe it just got a shot from the vaccine as well. So uh, those can happen early in life. I know the vaccine themselves do not cause Dravet syndrome. It's a genetic condition, but the fever that happens with the vaccine can cause the uh, seizures to happen. And then with time, the uh, seizures can migrate from one side to another. In this same child, uh, a few months later, he started having right-sided uh, jerks and right uh, hemiclonic seizures. So the seizures can vary with time and uh, it can change with age as well. And then after that, the seizures will get longer and longer. I have a family that tells me that every time the child was start having a seizure, they will run to the emergency because the seizures can last for like hours and hours until they go to the emergency and give the necessary treatments. And lots of times they end up having status epilepticus and they needed intubation even and like anesthetics to block those seizures and stop them. And as we said, early in life, most of the time the seizures will be triggered by fever, uh, hot temperature, even like any change in the, in the temperature. I have patients like go from uh, air conditioned uh, environment in the hot summer day and then they go out and they will have this like hot uh, air coming out and uh, and then they will, the child will start having seizures or the child gets sick or they put them in a bath and then start having the seizures. So any temperature rise, it can cause seizures to happen. And then as the child grows uh, with time, there will be more different types of seizures. And sometimes there will be periods of like no seizures and good response to treatment. And sometimes the seizures will come back later and be more frequent. And they do fluctuate with time and they tend to get worse like uh, in between the age of one to, to four years or five years of age. And then it tends to kind of plateau and improve uh, after that. Also, they can change with time to different types of seizures it will be myoclonic seizures, atonic seizures and drop attacks. They will have hemiclonic uh, seizures like uh, in the children or all the body shaking. So there are multiple different types and they can have atypical absence. They will stare and be unresponsive. There are so many different types of seizures that can happen and that changes with time. The testing, the EEG will be initially normal 
And then with time, it can get slower and it can call it to have like the typical generalized discharges all over or in a whole hemisphere. So the EGA has uh, some features of uh, epileptic uh, activity in the brain and imaging usually is normal and uh, patients with Dravet syndrome, even it's in the diagnosis that imaging should be normal to consider that it is a Dravet syndrome. What causes Dravet syndrome? As we said, Dravet syndrome is a genetic uh, cause and there is a genetic etiology behind Dravet syndrome. The most famous gene that happens in about 80% of the patients is the SCN1A, which is sodium channel uh, uh, mutations. That will make the sodium channel dysfunctional and not working well. And it happens to be in the neurons, they call inhibitory interneurons. Those neurons are, and those nerve cells are designed to carry GABA, which is the inhibition in the brain that will calm down the electricity and get the good control over the electricity. So if those are dysfunctional, then the electricity will be haywired and will be going all over and causing seizures to happen. So that is why those are uh, very important uh, uh, in the diagnosis. And sometimes the SCN1A will be normal and we have still Dravet syndrome. So there are multiple other genes that are now discovered that can cause the same features of Dravet syndrome, not just not necessarily the sodium channel uh, gene. How about the development in Dravet syndrome? Most of the children will initially, as we said, will have normal development and then the development we kind of like start to plateau and not uh, improve and uh, progress as the other peers. And in rare cases, there will be regression, which means that the child achieved like motor strength or ach uh, achieved speech and everything, and then will get worse with time. Most of this happens after a strong seizure or status epilepticus that the child needs to go to the hospital and be on sedative treatment. That sometimes we see a dip in the uh, uh, in the like development, and then that sometimes can pick up or just stay plateau. And interestingly, some cognitive function is correlated with the right treatment. So if we give wrong treatment for Dravet syndrome, as we will explain in the treatment part, the seizures can get worse and the cognitive function can get worse as well. Let's talk a little bit about other comorbidities, means that other conditions and other uh, issues that happen with Dravet syndrome, because it's a genetic uh, condition. So there are multiple systems that are involved and multiple issues. Number one, and one of the most bothersome conditions is behavioral issues. So lots of kids will have behavioral disturbances. They will not be listening to their parents. They are like running away. They don't have any stranger anxiety. They can go hug an, an, anyone. And they have, um, like, they don't listen. They have hyperactivity. They have ADHD. Um, they're just like very perseverant. They just want to eat something and they don't want to change and they want to like have very regular routines. And some kids will have uh, other behavior disturbances, like they will hit uh, kids and they will be like not listening to the family, which can be like very draining to the family to deal with. And the second thing is sleep disturbances, which is also a sleep issues is a very, very, very bad uh, issues in some children with Dravet syndrome. So children with Dravet syndrome, they often have issues with initiating sleep, which means that they have very bad uh, habits of not going to sleep. And it is very hard time for children who have this, the families are exhausted, literally, you know, like if you have a family, just Tell me, you know, let me know about your experience with this. It can be very, it's a nightmare to put the child to sleep. And they have issues about a third of the children will have issues maintaining sleep. So once the child wakes up in the middle of the night, they are wide awake. They want to go to play and they want to do everything. Again, it is like, you know, you're, you're exhausted throughout the day and you're like now in the middle of the night and you want to kind of sleep and the child wakes up and start to play and, and go around. It can be like taxing and draining for the whole family, especially the mother who takes care of the child. They most. <laughs> Many children will need uh, to do behavioral treatment, which means that they should be in a regular sleep schedule, sleep in their own beds and not sleep with parents. But, you know, come on, like, let's be real here. Some patients, like, they have seizures at night and their families are, are very worried about them. And, and, you know, like, there are so many things. So I'm, I'm not here to judge anyone because it's very, very difficult to deal with. And uh, we lots of times end up giving them sleeping pills to help their sleep. But there's no, like, any sleeping pill that that works very well with Dravet syndrome. But we should know that some sleeping pills that are used for sleep in other patients, like uh, Benadryl, Delphinhydramine, can worsen epilepsy and seizures, so we should be avoiding that. Other issues will be feeding. 
Feeding can be also an issue in patients with Dravet syndrome. They will have, uh, they are, my, some of them are picky eaters, some of them they just like one type of food and perseveration on that type of food and then they really want that food of choice, otherwise they will not eat anything. And if you give them that food of choice, they can eat, you can sneak in other uh, food items, but it can be a real struggle to feed a child with Dravet syndrome because they have an, uh, inattention and they're not, paying attention, they have loss of appetite. So it is it is a struggle. And some patients, you know, like families tell me that, you know, we stay for like an hour or, or one and a half hours to just feeding the child and it's draining and exhausting to the families. Some cases, they, the child will not be uh, feeding very well and, and they even like have struggling with medications and they don't take their medications and it's a struggle every time. So they will end up needing a feeding tube and it's all, it's a big decision to put a feeding tube in a child, but with Dravet syndrome, it can be really justified because we can have them like eat their food and uh, get that benefit from the nutrition and also give the medications on time and give the caregiver some time to, to kind of like catch their breath so that they can continue to take care of the child with Dravet syndrome. Some orthopedic complications are the um, stiffening in the muscles and there is one classic gait that happens with uh, Dravet syndrome children due to spasticity called uh, crouch gait. Uh, like this picture, you can see like the, the reflection, like, you know, they're, they're very stiff and all the muscles are st stiffened up and there will be the walking in a very weird way. And this way is very an effective way of, of walking. So p children will have issues with uh, not able to run fast and they get exhausted and tired with this uh, way of walking. It can be an issue as well. And they need physical therapy. They need medications to kind of relax their muscles. The other risk is a uh, risk of death in uh, children with uh, epilepsy. So unfortunately, um, there is always a risk of uh, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, which is, is called SUDEP. Uh, it is rare, it happens one in 4,000 to 1,000 in uh, children of epilepsy. And uh, in uh, children with Dravet syndrome, the chances are higher because of the um, channels and electricity in mostly in the heart. It is not well formed and it has some arrhythmias and some issues in the heart itself, a low heart rate and all of that. So there is a higher risk of die death because of uh, Dravet syndrome. Also, they can die from, uh, from having status epileptics and very long seizures. But if we treat them very well, hopefully all of those complications will be avoided. So overall, all this, those comorbidities can make it very challenging to care for uh, children with Dravet syndrome. It can affect the whole family. It can be uh, draining and cause uh, what we call caregiver burnout. So you should take care of yourself so that you can take care of your child. How do we treat Dravet syndrome? So this is the most important part of this video, which is the treatment. So first of all, we should know what not to do and not to give in Dravet syndrome. There are some medications that are called sodium channel blockers. They can block the sodium channels and those sodium channels, we know that they're already not working very well. So that will make every everything worse and should be avoided. And those medications are carbamazepine or tigritol, oxcarbazepine, lamotrigine and uh, phenytoin for the long use. And there's only one exception for phenytoin use and phosphenytoin in cases of status epilepticus and emergency. It can be used as a, pro a part of the protocol for status epilepticus. There's a new consensus of experts on uh, in the world about uh, the treatment of uh, Dravet syndrome was led by my mentor and uh, teacher, Dr. Elaine Worrell from the Mayo Clinic, which I learned a lot of from her during my fellowship at the Mayo Clinic. So Dr. Worrell is great doctor that she has a very good expertise in Dravet syndrome and she led this efforts. So the first treatment and the best treatment is valproic acid or Depakote. So valproic acid works very well in children with Dravet syndrome. It works in the different mechanism that helps with the seizures and, and most of the time we should start with that medication. It does have effects on the liver and, uh, and the body and made a whole video about uh, valproic acid for your information. The second line of treatment is uh, fenfluramine Staropentol and Globazac. As we can see, fenfluramine is uh, the second choice of treatment, which is a medicine that was used a long time ago in the 1960s for weight loss. And it was fenfluramine and fentaramine called fenfen, and that was a, a pill for weight loss. And it was working for weight loss, but it did have uh, the dangerous complications in the heart valves, and it was completely stopped. But it was found to be helpful, that part of fenfluramine, and then we found that it is helpful in epilepsy and was uh, finally approved by the FDA in, in the year 2020. 
you know, something good happen in the COVID pandemic time. And this medicine works very well for uh, Dravet syndrome. Some side effects can be uh, fatigue and uh, loss of appetite and weight loss. Other medicine is stereopentol. And stereopentol was used worldwide for many, many years and was recently approved in the United States by the American FDA. And it, it can help with uh, Dravet syndrome and it is very, very effective. Uh, it, we should know that it is an enzyme inhibitor in the liver, which means that it does interact with liver enzyme and the processing of other medications. And because it's an enzyme inhibitor, it will make other medications that go through the liver much higher levels in the blood and like side effects more. And it will increase the levels of fenfluramine and uh, clobazam and uh, valproic acid dipacots. All of those medications can increase in the level. So if you start this medicine, styropentol, we have to lower those other medications to decrease the chances of side effects and interaction. Other medications can be clobazam or the benzodiazepine family. And uh, those medications are good, but they can cause sedation and uh, sleepiness in patients with epilepsy. Then the third line will be uh, cannabidiols. So cannabidiols are uh, extracts from uh, the plant marijuana, which is the CBD part. But we should, in uh, Dravet syndrome, use only pharmaceutical grade marijuana, which is a medicine now we have, it's called Epidiolex, and because it has a higher concentration that is needed to control the seizures, and uh, we can use that, and I have made a video about Epidiolex for full details. And it is not recommended to use artisanal marijuana, which is marijuana from dispensaries and you can buy online. And the fourth line is Topiramate, or Topamax, and it is very important, this medicine can be used for patients with Dravet syndrome, and we should know that this medicine can cause hypohydrosis, which is decrease in sweating, and that can increase the susceptibility to uh, hot uh, days and fever. So it is very important to kind of watch uh, for this side effect and keep the, car, the child cool and well hydrated. And then we can use the ketogenic diet, which can help in decreasing the seizures and help the treatment of uh, this condition. And the last thing we can try is uh, levetiracetam or Kipra, but we should be aware of the psychiatric side effect. If all of those medications and treatments fails to control the seizures, then we can go to surgical treatments. And the surgical treatment that is now suggested is vagus nerve stimulation or VNS, which can help with seizures. And the consensus statement recommends strongly against uh, using resective surgery or like cutting out the brain because it's a multifocal condition and it's a genetic cause. So even if we cut a part of the brain, the other parts will continue to have seizures. So it is not recommended to do any resective surgery. And we know that Sometimes status epilepticus can lead to mesial temporal sclerosis or scarring in the temporal lobe, but this is a secondary uh, cause. It's not the primary cause of seizure. We also should have seizure action plan, which is very important to have an action plan uh, laid out of all the rescue treatments that can be given to family. And we should avoid uh, having any uh, fever and avoid having any triggers for seizures. And if a seizure happens, we have an action plan to treat with the child at home and school and that includes some rescue treatments with, uh, which include nasal midazolam, nasal diazepam, oral disintegrated tablets of uh, clonazepam and we have diazepam and tensils and rectal diazepam. All of those are lines of treatment for the rescue and emergencies that you, sh you should consider with your neurologist. And the question, can I give my child vaccinations if they have Dravet syndrome? The consensus and the practice now is that yes, it is recommended to give your child all the recommended vaccinations for age. And yes, there are some uh, vaccines that can cause fever, especially the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. And it is better to uh, do some prophylactic treatment with antipyretics means like uh, medications for fever. Uh, you can give uh, acetaminophen or Tylenol and uh, uh, ibuprofen or Motrin to prevent fevers from happening. And some patients will get uh, kind of bridging benzodiazepine like uh, lorazepam, ativan, or some something to kind of calm the, down the brain. But remember, if we don't give the vaccine, the child can get the actual infection and then they can be sick for many, many days and that can be dangerous on their life. So now the recommendation is to give the vaccines of, for the children with Dravet syndrome. There are other seizure types in young children called infantile spasm. Those are dangerous seizures that need to be immediately picked up and immediately diagnosed or the child will have uh, dangerous complications and will not grow very well. And to know and learn all about this type of uh, seizures, you can see this video for full details and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.